Hello again guys and welcome back to a brand new GPWS series. And also, welcome to 2022. This is the first series we're doing this year, so let's start the new year right, shall we? With more dollar watches! It's not like we finished off last year doing it with them. As you may or may not know, viewers, we ended off last year working on a dollar watch that we were trying to fix the hairspring. And we ended up discovering that the hairspring may have not needed fixing at all. Instead, the hairspring had a magnetism issue, and I highly doubt West Clock watches came with any sort of magnetized hairspring or anything like that. So the series on this will continue once the demagnetizer gets here, because other than that, there's really no way to, uh, to demagnetize one of these things, and when it's magnetized, it won't run accurately. Also, I'm pretty sure my entire collection of watches may be magnetized in one way or another. Some less than others, though. Some to the point where, you know, it doesn't affect the accuracy of the watch, but obviously this one, it's really bad, so I need to get rid of that. So anyway, that's in the mail. I just ordered it yesterday from Amazon, so we're going to see when that gets here. So yeah, viewers, we'll be talking more about magnets and these watches later on, really. As for this series, though, I don't think this will affect us too much. Um, I'll link a video in the description uh, about uh, how to demagnetize a watch. Actually, it works for basically every watch, pocket or wrist. So, I'll link that in the description. You can kind of see more what I'm what I'm getting at. I, I basically followed said video's instructions, and. Uh, we <laughs> we had a bit of a magnetism issue, so yeah, we're going to get around to fixing that. But anyway, for right now, let's not worry about magnets. We'll talk about them more later. The thing we're going to be talking about is the 1964 West Clock Canadian Auto Watch here. And the reason I specify Canadian is because if, it, if I've learned anything in 2021, it's that these things vary and not just the dollar watches, but literally every West Clock product, and you can probably apply this to any other brand too. They all vary a lot from country to country in about 17,000 different ways. So, so the, these series is here, you know, that, that made in Canada part is really important because if you're in the US, you can definitely apply a lot of what you see here to whatever watch or clock you have but for the most part that made in Canada is kind of really important so just so you know the difference here so just in case you're totally absolutely new to working on one of these things the reason why we're even doing this to begin with is because oil in clocks it expires after a, a certain amount of time that is a highly debated subject, and I'm not going to give you specific years. I don't know. I like to probably ch service these things uh, maybe every, oh, I don't know. This number will probably vary depending on what oil I'm using. I don't know. Let's say five years. That's kind of a starting point. So every, every kind of five years, you want to um, service one of these things, or maybe, you know, six, seven, I don't know. <laughs> Five to seven years, how about that? We'll throw that number around. Every decade might be pushing it, so. Anyway, let's get into one of these things. So obviously with an auto watch, you know, it's made to go on your car dashboard. And of course, back in the day, cars had metal dashboards. So yes, this is this magnet did not come with this watch, obviously. Um, and I don't know what that adhesive stuff is. That might have been for an original magnet that was on this thing. Who knows what, you know, I never know what these people do with these things. This magnet I just found somewhere, so, and for some reason the coating, I don't know what's, I don't know if that's decorative or not, but it's peeling off. I've been, I've been storing this watch on my refrigerator, so, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, it'll be really cool to have a dollar watch running in the kitchen on the fridge, and it doesn't come off. This is a really strong magnet here, and I'm sure the original was strong too, but anyway, let's put that aside right now, and let's get the back off. So when I first started, I uh, I used a really sharp knife, and <laughs> I ended up getting this scar from that because it slipped 
in July of 2019 when I was filming an episode of uh, of another uh, series I used to do back then. And yeah, I yeah, that was not pleasant. So after that, I ended up investing in a watch case opener set off Amazon. I think there's probably about five or six of these things. And I've had it for two years or so. Or, wait, no, I think it's the third year I've had this now. And it's great. So, And this little cover, by the way, it not only protects the blade of this, but this thing will also come in handy later as well. I just kind of discovered a, a new use for these things. So keep the covers for these things. So anyway, <laughs> as I put it back on, I'm going to pry the back off of this. So I kind of like to go up against the crown usually because I feel that's the place you have the most grip. Some of these are really tight on, some of them aren't. This one came off like nothing. I've had these off a few times already, so. Yeah, and let's, is that, what the heck is going on in here? I don't know. So right off the bat, you can see, I mean, yeah, this is literally the same as any other dollar watch here. I've got a pocket bend from, actually, no, th let's look at the date code first. This is nine, This is November of 1964, so 1164, so that's what that means. This pocket bend is almost the same age. And yes, the pendant is broken off this one. That is a common thing for these watches. This never had a pendant, though. Oh, I've got the wrong one. <laughs> Whoops. Just grab the actual right pocket bend for this. You can see me do it again. There we go. As you can see, the movements are literally the same. This one is actually just one year earlier. Isn't that interesting? Huh. When you live in Canada, you get to keep the two-spoke, or the older movement for longer. I can't remember what the heck they're called, though. I'll have to have, ask my dollar watch source on that. Anyway, yeah, it's literally the same movement. So if you have a pocket bend or an auto watch or whatever, you can basically apply everything back and forth. And covering on the, or talking about this case back a little more, obviously it's magnetic to some extent. Where's the magnet? That'd be great if I lost the magnet now. I wouldn't, oh, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, if you have a magnet, or if the magnet's on there, make sure and try not to lose it. How about that, boys? Let's try that. Anyway, so this thing sticks onto here. And let's try it on a normal back, case back. Nothing. It's not magnetic. So, I'm assuming there's some sort of shield in the... I don't know, this has to be some sort of special case back for this. Um, obviously, as I was talking about earlier with magnets, you do not want the hairspring to get magnetized in this thing. And obviously, West Clock must have known about that. This, so this this case back is probably, although they look absolutely identical, don't they? This one is somehow different from this one. So I don't know if it's the metal composition they've used or if there's some sort of layer in this thing or I don't know what they've done. Anyway, it's a really strong magnet on there. So don't mix up your case backs. Keep that one with the auto watch. and. In the late Christmas spirit here, uh, this is a Christmas uh, jelly, jelly Belly container, which is conveniently good for storing this stuff. So yeah, if you're doing this for the first time or doing it at all, anytime, then these things come in handy. I am not a Jelly Belly man, personally, but this container is nice, so I'll probably... I, I have too many containers here. You gotta, you gotta watch that. You know, you, get, you keep some of these things, and then you have a pile of them. I gotta pox some of them out. I always have too many of these things. Anyways, so there's our case back. Pocket bend's gonna go away for now. And here we go. So what do we do here? We're just staring at this blankly. So right off the bat there, there's a screw here, which we'll start with. And you can get it on a flat surface. I bought this pocket watch movement holder um, because it's great and it's actually incredibly handy we're just going to stick that in there and we're going to get this out of here oh okay that screwdriver's not working so this this releases the crown there we are first thing take that out oh, i don't want to magnetize all the screws yeah, that magnet I'm just going to leave there and stick the case back in there with it and then put that over here or something. So yeah, basically keep track of where you're putting everything. This is why I actually kind of started recording these videos to begin with, viewers, was to know where I've been with these projects. So that was kind of part of it when I started. 
Anyway, uh, and it still is part of it, because this is really handy, you know, you can look back with a video, you can replay it a thousand times, and you won't have any sort of issues with it, or, you know, trying to put things back together. Anyway, so there's this little button up here, you just pull this up, you get your nail in there, see the groove there? And then you release the, it releases the crown. Uh, we'll just snap that down there. I don't know if it makes a difference if the crown is up or down, you kind of have to wiggle it out. Oops, shoot, this seems, these things can be just fun to play with sometimes. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, we're not coming. Uh, okay. I'm not getting oil on my hands. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, come on. Okay, there we go. There is the auto watch crown. And yeah, you're not going to want to lose any of these pieces, viewers, because they are, like, if you look at any old pocket band or something, the crowns do not look like that at all. So, you are going to want to keep all of these in a special place, like that. So, now we will just, uh, there's a couple screws here. See those springs on those screws there? You just got to loosen those. We don't have to take them out entirely. Loosen up a few turns here. I can get my actual grip on these things. Oh, playing hard to get, are we? Sometimes these things just don't work because you're not having it on a flat surface properly here. And chances are these have never been worked on, so they this thing has been tight since November of 1964. Uh, let's see here, let's get our custom-made screw, oh shoot. Yes, this is a custom-made screwdriver here. I know, you can tell, I just, I literally just ground one down with a Dremel there. Took a Dremel and just ground it down. And let's try this one instead. Okay, there we go. Wasn't using the right screwdriver. So anyway, we just loosen that, and the whole movement is starting to become loose in the case. And you gotta get some fine screwdrivers for this, viewers. So, there we go. So now, we can drop, this should just drop out of here. Yes! And there is the inside of the case. Fantastic. And there's the bottom. Now what's nice here is this is a, um, a paper dial. This is not, oh, the, thank you timer. This is not glow in the dark, from what I can tell. AKA not radium, or this might have a, this might be a tritium dial. I'm not sure. I don't know on this one. The hands absolutely not. They're just painted white. So yeah, this is in fantastic shape. It's a paper dial. Ooh, there's a little bit of tear there. Let's get this off and not damage it, because that is. I mean, you saw the way this thing looks. This is in really nice shape. So I don't want to screw this up this is so we hope oh, something just fell out of here i just oh there goes one of the screws where did that fall out of okay it fell out of there so we're gonna stick that in here and now we can work with this here so yes viewers we're taking the hands and the dial off now just in case you didn't know i kind of do that sometimes where i'll just assume everyone knows what i'm doing Sorry, viewers. So anyway, there is the hand in there. We'll stick some... Uh, you can replace this with uh, saran wrap or whatever. This is some of the plastic recyclable packing paper. It came with a new sink vanity. So anyway, we'll just find a nice open spot there. And stick our screwdriver under there. There we go. I don't know if that was the smoothest, but anyway, I was, I was done. And there is our hand. And just a little brass hand there. It just sticks on there. I know you don't want to reattach it <laughs> right after you've taken it off, but... I thought there was a cullet in this thing. Maybe not. Hmm. Okay. And guess where the hand gets to go now? In here. So, that's great. And the hour hand, we're actually going to leave that with the dial because sometimes they don't want to come off. So that is staying there. And, oh, this is actually coming off already. 
Okay. Oh, you know what? This thing has a, has a metal dial pan that it's glued to. Right, right, right. Okay, now you'll see tabs. And I'm not sure which is the best place to start prying. And I don't like that this thing is loose because this is the money shot right here. You screw that up, then the watch looks terrible. Uh, I'm just trying to find a nice place to pry. And of course, you don't want to bend these tabs too much. That's why I'm kind of going for some of the other slots. I'm going to just kind of pry that up a little bit. And yeah. Uh, okay. Let's kind of try and pop it out like that. I don't know. It's kind of, I'm not the greatest at doing the dials yet. I'm just kind of experimenting around. Okay, there's our movement. So, back to this thing. Uh, yeah, we're just going to leave the hour hand on there. Might as well. It's not like you have to take this off and clean it and lubricate it or something. I'm going to try and re-glue that on there. But that is going to be something for the next episode, viewers. I feel this video has gone on long enough. So, with that being said, I will see you in the next part of this.